Whispers Growing by MP Real Invective The video begins recording with a clap and a small blinking red light to denote the fact that the camera is live. A man stands in front of a camera in a Victorian-looking room with random phrenology charts, guttering candles, and anatomical skeletons behind him. He is in a dark sports jacket, and his hair is perfectly coiffed. To the unobservant, he would look exactly like a newscaster who is getting ready to read the obituaries live on the air. To his more perspective audience, he is trying to project a calm and collected air, but he is anything but. After a few moments in which he tries to compose himself, he speaks. Welcome to this week's episode of Sinister and Strange, a web series dedicated to the strange and supernatural. Suicides, ruined lives, many of us are still reeling from the death of one of YouTube's very own urban explorers and the shockwaves it sent through our community. Tonight's episode, John Karoff. This is a very special episode as I consider John to be a close friend of mine. His death hit me hard, but through your support, an insistence that I address the circumstances of his passing, I've managed to make it here today. A few months ago, John Kirov died in a live stream in front of thousands of adoring fans. Before we view tonight's episode, I must warn the audience. This video contains mature language, adult themes, and self-inflicted violence. Without further ado, tonight's episode of Sinister and Strange, John Kirov. The live stream starts with John Kirov in front of the camera. He's in his late twenties and he looks disheveled. His palms are pressed against his temples and he blows out a long breath as if he were preparing himself to pull out his fingernails. In the background, a bottleneck can be seen sticking out from a mesh trash can alongside a few crumpled up cans. Eagle-eyed viewers identify the bottles as Grey Goose Vodka. His eyes appear dull and bloodshot. Hey, fuck faces! This is not his typical greeting. He slurs. Welcome to the live stream. He's immediately inundated with comments inquiring about his well-being. Long-time viewers are immediately concerned, given that he has posted a video a few months ago titled Draw My Life, Three Years Sober, which detailed his struggle with alcoholism and how it sent his father to an early grave. That video ended with him telling everyone about how alcohol nearly killed him and he would never touch a drink again. A few moments pass, and John Kirov hazily looks through the dozens of comments before he burbles. Yeah, I'm drunk. So what? What's the big deal? People fall off the wagon all the time. Sometimes they need to to just so they can realize how important it is to be sober. He takes a moment to read the comments before answering. Yeah, that's a shitty excuse. But I'm a shitty person, so what do you expect? Messages of... Is this a joke? Roll across the screen. A lot of his viewers can't believe he would attempt to hold a live stream in his condition. He looks into the camera on his laptop, as if he's trying to organize his jumbled thoughts before he continues. Do you want a joke? Here's a joke. I used to love all this shit, exploring places with actual histories and telling stories. Remember one of my earlier videos where it was just me and a handheld digital camera poking around an old factory and I found this dirty mattress, a bottle of pills with a label scratched off, and a bunch of old women's magazines? That was genuine discomfort and fear. I legitimately thought that there was a squatter going to come back at any moment and I'd have to run for my life. That was real. That's gone now. You killed it. John burps as he looks around for something by his feet. He eventually reaches down and picks it up, nearly falling out of his chair in the process. Having retrieved the item, he slurs to his fan base. You want to peek behind the curtain? Too bad. You're getting it anyways. Can you look at this shit? He lifts up a ratty looking doll. It's a cheesy half burnt doll that looks like it was lifted from the props department at the latest Chucky movie. He rotates the charred doll in his hand while sarcastically grasping and groaning in mock terror. Here's the best part. Watch what happens when I press this button on the back. John presses the button, and the doll's eyes open, revealing bright red pupils which appear to be dripping ketchup. It warbles. Mama. 
in a distorted voice that sounds like it was ripped straight from a B-horror movie. He groans in response as if it physically pains him to see it. I said that I wanted to investigate real places and see what comes from it, not this stage shit. I'm supposed to come across this little asshole tomorrow whilst investigating Sunnyside, mine, and it's supposed to be the thumbnail for the video. It's probably going to be hanging from the ceiling with chains or some stupid shit like that. John spins the doll around in front of the camera, giving his audience ample time to see how the doll's rigged up. I'm still trying to figure out how they're going to create a narrative in which there's a nine-year-old miner who carries her dolls to work in the mines with her. How the fuck are they going to explain this? My fucking producer is treating this like a jump scare series. There's no history needed, no real drama. It can all be manufactured, it's all smoke and mirrors. It's all lies and emptiness. John, wrapped up in his anger, hurls the doll against the hotel wall. It crackles, mama, and the eyes dripple red onto the carpet. John Kirov turns towards the hotel bathroom as if he's heard someone. It's obvious he's causing a scene with his outburst and that the adjoining rooms can hear him. He mumbles out an apology, but there's no audible reply. It distracts him for a moment longer than a standard blink before he's back at the audience. They got me staying in this shit hotel en route to an old mine in town. They got guys out there already probably painting pentagrams and upside down crosses and everything. Here's the funniest thing. The place is genuinely creepy from the photos I've seen. There's no need to stage anything. I could make a genuinely intriguing video without it. The scenery outside is a, it's beautiful. And when Judah posed with the darkness inside the mine, it could really build an oppressive atmosphere. But they want the views. They don't want a slow burn. Shit, I can imagine the video title already. Real Ghost Encounter in Sunnyside Mine. How I Almost Died. Fuck him. He looks like he could bury his head in his hands and cry at any moment. The comments are flying by, with fans telling him to call his AA sponsor and talk to someone. A few people are trolling. He ignores them before fixing his stare at the camera. Well, they're not the only ones to blame. It's you assholes, bombarding every urban exploration and abandoned hospital and factory video with ZOMG! I was so bespooked. Can't believe that the abandoned Jiffy Lube a mile outside of town is a haunted by swim paragos who leave oil splotches wherever they go. Is this for reals? You incentivize the charade. Ghost Grabbers, the title of his latest series. T-shirts and an urban exploration crew hat. They're making money off your stupidity and you gobble it all up, hook, line, and sinker. He grits his teeth and continues. Then there's the assholes calling everything a fake in the comments. Of course it's fake. You weren't watching it when it was real. It was too boring for you. No one was interested in me walking through an empty automotive factory while talking about the history of the place. It's all industrial accidents and shattered dreams. You can't have it both ways. It can be real and full of excitement all the time. You either get something real and atmospheric punctuated by occasionally exciting moments, or you can get something exciting all the time and fake. Are you happy? Is this... Real enough for you. Fuck you. Fuck you! Karaf is shouting at the audience now. He suddenly snaps his head in the direction of the bathroom. He whispers. I think I pissed off the next door tenant in this shithole. I can hear him talking through the bathroom wall. Think he's calling management? Wanna see me get arrested on stream? Bet you do. Probably make your day. He gets up and stumbles into the bathroom to apologize to the attendant through the walls. He steps off camera, but the recording picks up his voice. Sorry man, I'm only going to do a couple more minutes. I just got to do this one thing real quick and we'll be, I'll be quiet for the rest of the night, I swear. Junkerov returns to the seat in front of the camera and sloshes into it. He belches. You guys more fucked up than me. 
blabbering something about wooden huts and skeletons. Probably should have expected as much as I pulled into the motel. This place is a real shithole. Surprised they don't rent by the hour. And have plastic wrapped beds. I guess you get what you pay for. I don't hate you guys, though. No. How can I? You're just like me. Always judging everything around and desperate to see something that suggests the world is something other than ordinary. We want to know that there's more to life. I, I poke around the abandoned churches and asylums hoping to catch a glimpse of what's beyond the veil. Anything to give me a reason. A reason to believe in something. A reason to get out of bed in the morning. I just need a reason to keep... He trails off. Maybe he's worried he's saying too much. Maybe he's worried that this will open a floodgate and he'll be swallowed in the depressing deluge. John Karoff looks like he's seconds away from dissolving into tears. Why do I? He snaps his head towards the bathroom. Apparently some sound that wasn't picked up by the audio equipment has distracted him. Many people have suggested that the neighboring tenant has said something, but there's nothing to indicate that an audible noise has been made. He shouts. Shut up, I'm trying to have a moment here! He starts crying. He wipes away the tears, but more come unbidden. What's left for me to do? I, sh I share a shit fuck on my YouTube red contract once this gets all out. I'm gonna fire my ass. I really shit the bed on this one. It's like I always seem to do with everything. He glances off the camera towards the bathroom again. Frustration playing across his face as he shouts. Mind give me a moment, man! Just let me say good- The sound apparently continues and John loses his patience. Alright, now you're just pissing me off! John Croft sits up from the chair and stalks towards the bathroom. His entire body is trembling like he's about to blow a gasket. He picks up a shoe on the way, likely to bang the adjoining wall while shouting something. And he steps out of the camera's frame. Everything is quiet for a moment, except for the constant dings of messages inquiring about what's going on that are scrolling across the screen, which are pinging him. What happens next stuns the audience to silence. The quiet moment is broken by John tumbling back into frame. He looks terrified. He whimpers, What the fuck? He loses his footing and falls, striking his head on the side of the computer chair. It sounds like he hit it with full force. There's a brief moment when nothing happens. There are no messages, as the audience is transfixed by what is happening. John is not talking. For a moment, the viewers wonder if he has suffered a concussion. But an instant later, he's crawling across the floor. He looks harried and distraught. There's a red spot on his head that will likely form into a bruise. He crawls along the carpet, looking visibly dazed and frantic. Eventually, he drags himself past the scope of the camera, and everything is silent before the chat erupts into a fury of dings. Five minutes roll by with frantic messages popping up on the screen. Most are trying to figure out what's going on. Some are asking if John is okay, and others are asking if this is all being staged. Some people are trying to get in contact with the police, thinking that the next-door tenant threatened John to the point of causing a panic attack. Some people are trying to get in contact with YouTube, but it's late at night and they are put on hold. Before anything new can develop in their attempts to reach out, John Carafe returns for a final act. John shambles by the screen and bumps the table as he's passing it. The coffee table he was recording on tips over and the laptop falls to the ground with a visual jaunt. The camera shifts and points to the bathroom just in time to see John stumble into a dirty looking room. He's no longer crying when he speaks. Please don't leave me. The words sound almost like they don't belong to him. He doesn't say anything else. Instead, he takes off his belt and loops it around his neck. Ineffectual messages telling him to seek help are pouring in, but he's too far gone to notice. He ties the belt to the doorknob in a perfunctory manner. His face is devoid of emotion, but he looks like he's aged a thousand of years. There's nothing there. He doesn't say anything. He just sits down. He dies quietly. The scene is blurred out, 
but through the mosaic you can see him writhing around. His brain is being deprived of oxygen. His neck doesn't snap. Instead, he slowly chokes. In the uncensored version, you can see his Adam's apple bobbing against the belt, as if in an attempt to free himself. He twists and turns for minutes in what looks like agony before he stills. The audience watches the stream continue on, with the camera facing the bathroom and John Kirov's lifeless body. The video ends and it cuts back to the set of Sinister and Strange. The host speaks. Panicked calls flooded 911, but without a physical address, they could do nothing. They can only watch for the next 30 minutes before the camera dims and the live stream ends. On June 1st, 2017, John Kiroff took his own life during a live stream. John was beloved by his fans. Many claim the stress was too much, which was compounded by relationship, management, and personal issues. His confrontation with the person in the motel room next to him was likely the final straw. Whether he talked with the man in the moments he was off camera, or he was just threatened by him through the wall cannot be verified. Attempts to ascertain the identity of the man have turned up no leads. All that we know for certain is what we can see on the stream that some in the audience recorded. The death of John Kirov was just the beginning of terrible things to come for some. His fans have taken the news of his death hard. Some organized candlelight vigils to say farewell to the man they knew. His videos were flooded with comments, eulogizing his life and trying to come to terms with their loss. A few were even hit so hard by this traumatic passing that they even took their own lives, some even parroting his final words. Please don't leave me. Those people left behind families, lovers, and friends who will miss them dearly. Much like John, they ended their lives way too soon. Yet, there are some who claim that there is something far more sinister at play here. People who have visited the motel and reviewed the visitor logs on the night of John's death say that no one was registered to the room next to him. To make things stranger, viewers have attested to seeing a shadow moving across the screen at multiple occasions during the live stream. The most noted times that people have claimed to see a dark form were right after John injured himself on the floor and was crawling away when he re-entered the frame. They claim the dark shadow was slowly approaching the down man. The next time the shadow is spotted happens as John enters the bathroom. People have reported seeing a dark form circling around him. Some have even remarked that they could see the shadow during the suicide. Analysts who have studied the video can find no recorded instance of these reports of shadowy figures are unverified. Whether or not you think there is something more to the video, or you're just trying to come to terms with the loss of your friend, I ask that you be respectful in the comment section. As for me, I gotta say, I think I see something there. I've watched the video multiple times and it never ceases to unnerve me. This is something that's going to haunt me. I consider John my friend. Good night, everyone. Tell those who are close to you that you love them. And keep it strange. Greg ends the recording and blows out a sigh. He immediately ranks the video as one of the worst ones he's ever done. The entire experience has left him drained and feeling unclean. He had met John a few times at YouTube conventions. He was an alright guy. They'd only hung out for a little bit. John was quiet, and Greg was more caught up in everyone around him. He was acquainted at best, but that didn't mean that everything that happened didn't weigh on him. He didn't want to do this video, but everyone had been clamoring for the past month, and he eventually gave in. Sometimes he thought about quitting. His inbox had been flooded with requests for this since John's death. Some arriving before his death was even confirmed by authorities, and multiple people had privately messaged him the video of the live stream on numerous occasions. He had told everyone that he felt uncomfortable talking about the death of someone he knew, but they persisted. After a few weeks of constant requests and people complaining, Greg relented. He sat down and rubbed the bridges of his nose. The thought of quitting YouTube had popped into his mind from time to time, usually when he saw a particularly terrible comment or video. 
but never had he ever wanted to leave this all behind as much as he did in this very moment. It sapped him, and sometimes he even wondered if they would keep pressing and pressing until he cracked under the pressure of their demands. They wanted blood, and they didn't care how it affected him. They would probably have him provide a retrospective on the death of his mother if they had thought it would make an evocative story. In his lowest moments, Greg imagined them as emotional vampires, unable to feel emotions themselves unless they were stolen from those around them. They wanted everything and sometimes it felt they were bleeding him slowly with a dull knife. He wondered if they would sap everything out until he was nothing but a splintered skeleton and a wooden heart. He paused. He had never said those words before, but they seemed so apt for this situation. He didn't know where those words came from. He didn't realize that he had heard them mentioned only minutes before in the video. Thinking those words opened up a part inside him and something dark began to wriggle its way into his heart. He didn't realize what was happening. He had just heard its call. As Greg sat there in silence and contemplated life, he could have sworn he heard those words again. Wooden heart. It was whispered low, but it slowly grew louder, until those around him heard and understood it. It would spread and infect everyone it could, desperate to not feel so alone. After all, misery loves company. The whispers grew, and we listened. If you like this video, please consider subscribing. And if you're an animal lover like me, please consider donating to the World Land Trust, a charity that aims to help wildlife through buying land, preventing development, and helping endangered species.